Ladies and gentlemen, today I wanted to discuss the smartest way to $10,000 per month in 2024. My name is George. I run a social media marketing agency that's doing 50K per month right now. And my goal with this channel is to help as many young people become entrepreneurs as possible. Now, I wanted to talk about this because when we come into a new year, there's so many people that are discussing and you know, considering taking new opportunities for their lives. They know that the traditional system isn't really gonna cut it for them, right? The whole school, university, career thing. And they're looking for a new opportunity. And that opportunity is of course gonna be online. We are talking about how to make $10,000 per month online here, not, you know, through any other method, okay? And so today I wanted to kind of give you my experience. I was able to get to $10,000 per month online in around <clears throat> six to nine months. I think it was around actually eight months uh, to be you know completely accurate. And yeah, I want to give you my experience on how I got there and how I think you could get there significantly faster than me, probably in about three months, if you really, really, really put your mind to it. Now, I'm not trying to give you any false expectations here, whether it takes you two months, whether it takes you 10 months, whether it takes you three years, it doesn't really matter. So long as you can achieve you know, this and, and go beyond this, that, that's really the most important step because, and here's the first kind of lesson that I want to kind of get, get, you know, get sort of give to you here is going from zero to one, right? Zero to, you know, 10,000 per month, right? And that's kind of what, you know, what I'm talking about here is the hardest part of, of your whole journey, right? So if you want to get to 10K a month in online business, going from zero to 10K a month is the hardest part. Going from 10K to 50K a month is less hard. Going from 50 to 100K a month is less hard. Why? Well, because from zero to one, literally everything has to change, right? You have to go from being a a civilian, right? Someone who is normal, not a business owner, someone who, you know, kind of through lack of a, you know, a better phrase kind of just goes, you know, with the wind, they, they do sort of what society expects of them. And to go from that to becoming someone who is extremely disciplined, extremely independent, extremely, um, you know, leadership orientated, all of the things that you need to be to become a 10 k per month entrepreneur. And that identity change is, absolutely huge. You have to go through so much change to, to get to this that anything after it becomes incredibly, incredibly easy by comparison. It's kind of like the first mover, right? You know, it's, it's the hardest to kind of get a boulder moving, let's say. But once it's moving, once it's rolling, you've got that momentum behind you, um, you know, it gets gradually easier. So that's something that you can definitely keep in mind. Okay. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about the smartest way to get to $10,000 per month in 2024. And that is, in my opinion, B2B service businesses. Now, this is essentially a fancy term for a marketing agency. Okay. Now, why do I think B2B service businesses are the best business model for you to start in 2024? <clears throat> well, I'm going to explain that in this video. But what I want to stress to you is that there are so many shiny objects on the internet at the moment. There is Amazon FBA, there is crypto, there's all of the new agency packages that the gurus are trying to, you know, wrap up and, and give it to you as, as if it's something new, right? Build and release, IPGA, all of these things. They're all just B2B service businesses, but they just have slightly different pricing models or slightly different approaches. They're not necessarily better than your traditional B2B service SMMA that, you, that you've obviously heard of in the past. It's all the same thing, okay? It's just you're providing services to other businesses, business to business. You're a business, you're providing services to other businesses, and they're gonna pay you for those services, okay? So let's let's dive in, okay? And I wanna break down today the parts, the actual kind of the, 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 the ingredients to build a B2B service-based business, okay? So we're gonna start here with mindset. I'm gonna break down each and every one of them as we go through, okay? And don't worry, I actually have a different colored pen this time to make things slightly more visually exciting, right? We've got mindset, we have marketing, okay? We have delivery or fulfillment, let's say. And I'm gonna try and keep this as raw as possible, so bear with me. No cuts today, I don't think. And then 
operations. And just to put this visually to you, the entire goal of this is to go from, let's say the y-axis here is 10K, right? We've got zero down here. And this is obviously time. We want to get from zero to 10K as quickly as we can, right? And that's 10K per month. So sustainability is the goal here, right? Um, and, you know, let's just put, for example, zero to six months as a, as a, as an ambitious goal, certainly, but, but let's just say that that's, that's the kind of time frame it, it, it could take if you execute what I'm going to share with you in this video. Okay. So first things first, let's talk about mindset. Now I know this looks a little bit Christmassy, which is kind of a little bit late, but <laughs> I only have two colored pens. I apologize. So yeah, let's start with mindset. Now, why is mindset important to start a B2B service-based business? Okay, um, and I'll, I'll actually dive into kind of what this is a little bit more when we get to marketing, but we can't even get to the business before we've done the mindset, right? So the business really kind of starts here, right? This is where the business starts, but we can't build a business if we haven't kind of sorted out what's up here, right? Because in the beginning, and I've, I think I discussed this in my previous video, but in the beginning, your business is, is a mirror, right? It's, it's literally just you, right? This is you. I apologize, but that is unfortunately you for the sake of this video, um, kind of looking in a mirror, right? Because at the start, your business is gonna be just you. When you're getting into online business in 2024, it's just gonna be you. You're not gonna hire a team straight away if you are starting from zero capital, if you're bootstrapping your business, which basically means to start a business without any funding, it's gonna be you. And of course, that's what we will recommend. Um, you know, I, I would recommend that as well. Um, bootstrapping a business, i.e. starting it with zero capital is the lowest risk option um, in 2024. Now you can talk about funding a little bit when you've got more, I just dropped my pen, when you've got a bit more experience. Um, but until then you should absolutely bootstrap your business because there's the lowest amount of risk. And it's, this kind of a business is, is the easiest to bootstrap, okay? So this is why mindset's so important because your business is a mirror. Because when it's just you, every input that you put into the business right, is going to obviously come and, you know, create an equal output, right? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And that means that if your actions are, you know, of low quality, right, where, you know, whether it be because you're getting poor sleep, whether it be because you are drinking, whether it be because you are um, just lazy, not putting enough work, maybe you're only putting in two hours a day, something like that, <clears throat> then the output that you're going to get is also going to be of low quality, right? It's this mirror effect that you're going to experience. And so what, what is actually important here to learn when it comes to the mindset? Well, I think that there have been a few key lessons for me that I kind of really want to share with you. Uh, I'll, I think I'll try and break it down to just three for you today. And then that will kind of get you started. That will get you on the way to, to this 10K a month thing here that we're all aiming for. Um, so the first thing, the first lesson I want to give you about mindset that's helped me tremendously is that you, are responsible okay so the first lesson is everything is is your fault right and I know you may almost get offended when I when I say that but <clears throat> it's really important that you understand this lesson so when I say that I mean that the situation you're currently in in your life look around you you know are you happy with your life are you unhappy with your life are you happy with your relationship are you unhappy with your relationship are you happy with your physique are you unhappy with your physique all of that the answer to that question is your fault why? Well, because how could it be anyone else's fault? Everything that, that kind of makes up you is to some degree in your control. It's in your control whether you exercise every day. It's in your control whether you work on a business every day. It's in your control how you act in your relationship, whether you're jealous or whether you're generous. All of that is is up to you. Now, of course, there are external um, effects that, that kind of uh, you know can put us in, in tricky circumstances. That isn't your fault, of course what the world kind of bestows on you isn't your fault, but it is your responsibility how you react to it, okay? Now, I'm not saying it's easy to react to kind of any kind of really tragic circumstance, but it's a really important lesson to internalize, okay? And, you know, when your business is going through rough patches, it's very easy to point the blame finger, right? So when, for example, you're stuck at 2K a month, you've got two clients, again, we'll talk a little bit more about what that actually means in a second, it's very easy to say, oh, it's, you know, my dad's fault because he didn't support me enough or, oh, it's, 
you know, my girlfriend's fault because she's not giving me, you know, enough time. That's the one I'm, I'm guilty of, actually. Um, I have a very, very happy relationship, but sometimes I, I find myself blaming my partner because I'm being lazy, but it, in actuality, it's, it's all my fault, right? It's just me being lazy. Um, and so the, the sooner that you can internalize and actually realize that you are in control and it's your fault, it's actually a beautiful thing because it gives you more power, right? Whoever is responsible, that is where the blame finger goes, right? It's your, it's your responsibility that I'm in this mess. It's your responsibility that I'm in this mess. But giving other people responsibility gives them the power, right? Responsibility is power. So you should always point the finger at yourself because that is what's gonna give you the most power to affect change in your life, okay? So that's number one, it's your fault. Number two is that the grass is greener, not on the other side, but where you water it. So this is a lesson that I got from Sam Ovens. I'm sure many of you are fans of his, but this helped me a lot. And this is especially relevant in the online business uh, world that we're discussing here today, okay? So let's just say um, this is, I, I'm gonna try and draw a watering can, all right? Bear with me. So let's say, this is your watering can. Looks a bit like a hoover, but there we go. The grass is greener where you water it. Now, what does that mean? Well, in the online business, you're gonna be dragged in so many different directions, right? You know, I can't tell you how dangerous this is, the, the whole shiny object syndrome thing. Because, you know, as soon as you decide, okay, this George guy, he's, he's talking some sense. I'm going to start an on, I'm going to start a B2B service-based business. In other words, I'm going to start a marketing agency, or I'm going to start a graphic design agency, or I'm going to provide a service to another business. The second you decide that, you're then going to be faced with immense temptation. You're going to be faced with the idea of starting, you know, a different, you know, you're going to, you're going to swap, swap what service you do, or you're going to swap the entire business model for B2C. You're going to start selling, you know, low ticket courses, or you're going to start selling products. This is so dangerous. And the important thing to understand and the lesson that I want to kind of bestow on you is the grass isn't greener on the other side. It's not that, you know, uh, e-commerce or dropshipping is, is better than this, or it's not that this is better than e-commerce or dropshipping. Well, in my opinion, it is, but, it, or, or, you know, for example, selling Facebook ads to businesses is better than selling graphic design, whatever it is, the grass isn't greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it, which means the grass is greener where you put all of your effort, all of your time, all of your resources, all of your attention, all of your focus, right? And, um, you know, focus is an absolute superpower, right? And kind of brings me on to another lesson that, that I won't add a separate here, but the idea that, that your focus is a, an absolute weapon, right? So let's draw a magnifying glass here, right? And I, I got this from, from Charlie Morgan, if you guys, guys know who he is. He's a, a really good... Um, big dude in the in the agency space, which is kind of this this area here. Um, but if you say this is a magnifying glass, right? And we've got the sun here. The magnifying glass is essentially your focus, right? Okay, and the sun is your energy. And to me, the better your focus is, i.e. the better, the, the stronger the, the magnifying glass is, because they come in, in different strengths, um, the more effective the, the beam will be, right? So say you're trying to set something on fire, I don't know, uh, you know, let's just draw some, some sticks or whatever. If you've got bad focus, well then your, your, the beam is gonna be quite wide, it's gonna be quite broad, but if you have very, very good focus, then the beam is gonna be extremely precise and you're gonna be able to set fire to this to this thing. And obviously this is, I suppose, your goal, right? So it's impossible to have focus when you're being dragged in so many different directions, okay? You know, if, if you try B2B service-based businesses, i.e. SMMA or whatever you wanna call it for, you know, three months and then you try, I don't know, drop shipping for two months and then you give up on that, you, you're not developing any focus, right? You're just kind of, swapping your magnifying glass out every two seconds instead of just sticking with one, right? So yeah, that's the, that's the second lesson. That's something that I really want to kind of give to you um, and it's really, really helped me, okay? And number three is that we are not the best versions of ourselves. We are the standards that we hold ourselves to, right? So 
<clears throat> if we imagine a graph where the top axis here is your, your ideal self, right? And the bottom axis is your standards. We may reach up here sometimes, but we will kind of live around this, this bottom part. And that kind of sounds depressing, but it's, it's actually not. All that it means is you have to keep raising your standards. <clears throat> so what do I mean by this? Well, if your standards for, and th this applies to all kind of realms of your life, right? If, you're, if your standards are, for example, you know, uh, 10K in your bank account, right? That is your absolute hygiene standard. If you drop below that, you're going to feel absolutely disgusting. You're going to do everything in your power to get back to that point. Well, that means that you're going to pretty much have 10K in your bank account for a very long time because that is your standard. However, if you, for example, leverage, you know, the momentum that you get uh, and, you, and you, you know, you say you get to sort of 20K in your bank account, you should raise, you should try your best to kind of raise your standards consistently because now your standard will be that is 20K in your, in your account is the absolute minimum. And so, you know, you're not going to go below that, below that. And really, life is just a game of stair-stepping your standards all the way up um, until you have, you know, you're actually, your, your old goals are now your hygiene standards. This happened to me so many times in business. Like, you know, my, my absolute goal used to be getting to 10K a month. And now 10K a month, and, and this isn't to kind of offend anyone, but, but dropping to 10K a month would be absolutely horrific for me. Because, it, it, you know, it would just simply mean that something's gone very, very wrong. And I would feel very uncomfortable at that at that stage. And you know, even dropping to you know 40 or 30k a month right now it would feel very, very uncomfortable for me. Um, and that's a good thing, okay? Because really we are just trying to become he or she who who can, right? And that's just a game of raising your standards to to where your old goals were. Okay. And that's the that's the game you're playing. You raise your standards, you set a new goal, you achieve the goal, you raise your standards, and, and so on and so on. Um, until you become the person that is capable of achieving, you know, the next goal, right? And so that's that's how that goes. Bit of a not not exactly simple tips, but um, yeah, those three things have really really helped me. Um, it's your fault. Grass isn't greener on the other side; it's greener where you water it. And um, you know, we are the the uh, the sum of all of our standards, sort of thing. Okay, so. That's mindset. Now let's actually talk about business. If you're still with me, thank you very much. I know that was a bit of a long one, but it's important to cover because until we fix all of this, there's no way you're going to get to 10K a month in 2024. Okay. And so now we can actually talk about the business. So obviously if we want to do any marketing, we first have to decide what to sell. Okay. And this is where we can now start talking about this. So I'm going to break this down word by word. So B2B means business to business. So <clears throat> obviously you're a business. This is what we're trying to build here. And so instead of selling to customers, i.e. people without a business, um, or, you know, or, or not selling to the business, but selling to an employee in the business, for example, we are actually selling to other business owners, okay? Um, and that is really a great place to start uh, because it's, um, it's very high ticket doing that. Selling to other businesses is by, na by its nature tends to be higher ticket than selling to customers, okay? Now, moving on, let's talk about the service. So. Of course, in business, you pretty much have two choices, right? You sell a service or you sell a product, right? Um, so why should you sell a service instead of a, a product? And I've, I've touched on this before, but products carry more risk. They are more scalable, which means that they can make you more money without you investing more time because they're an, an external thing but they are inherently more risky because you have to spend time researching the product, you have to spend money stocking the product. Um, and if you really want to build an amazing brand, you have to spend money on research and development for a new amazing product, right? So services, on the other hand, don't require capital investment. They just require time investment, really, at the start. And, and you know, this is all kind of within the, as I mentioned earlier, within the understanding that you're going to be bootstrapping a business from zero, right? So, you know, we want to um, choose the option that is going to allow us to uh, make the, you know, the most money with the lowest amount of risk and the lowest amount of capital investment. And that's going to be a service because really when you think about it, all you're investing is your time, okay? You can learn pretty much anything you want for free on YouTube. And then all it is a case of is, of course, um, investing your time into marketing. And then eventually when you sign a client, investing your time into fulfilling that service. So whether it's you're selling Facebook ads or you're selling website design or you're selling, um, I don't know, uh, you know, SEO, whatever your service is, there's a myriad of different services 
um, you're just investing your time into delivering that service, right? Um, and the value in that is that is twofold. A, the business owner doesn't know how to fulfill the service, and so they hire you. And B, they don't they know how to fulfill the service, but they don't want to spend the time doing it, right? Because they want to focus on other areas in the business. So that is why service is valuable and low risk. Okay. Obviously, then the question becomes, what, what do I sell, right? What do I sell? Um, and of course, that is where Alex Hormozzi starts his series of books, very famous entrepreneur, uh, $100 million offers. That answers the question of what do you sell, you know, in, in a way. And so to summarize, um, you should sell something that is valuable, <laughs> obviously, but you should sell something that has an, a, a very palpable return on investment, <clears throat> Okay. Now, it's not, this isn't really going to be a video breaking down all the things you could sell. If you want me to do that, please let me know in the comments below and I would be more than happy to do that. But um, you need to sell something that's kind of trading apples for apples, where a business owner pays you money because your service is going to directly put money into their bank account, you know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or, you know, worst case scenario, a couple of months down the line. Okay. Um, because then it just starts to make sense. If I pay you $2,000 and in a couple of weeks, you're going to make me $4,000. Well, I'm a good business owner because I've just made more money, right? I've just, you know, there's a little bit of a time difference there, but, um, so you want to do that. And, and typically that's going to be some kind of, um, service that helps them sell more of their thing. Okay. So for example, let's say they are <clears throat> a dentist, you're, you're selling to dentists. The service that you want to sell is, um, you know, something that's going to get them more patients, right? Cause that's how they make their money. Uh, or you're going to sell something that's going to make them more money via time saving. For example, operations. You could help them run their dentistry more effectively. Or you're going to sell them, um, you know, some kind of chatbot service that basically replies to customers for them. I'm kind of spitballing here. <laughs> don't don't sort of go and do these things without any good research. But yeah, I'm just giving you a good idea of what to what to kind of think about, right? So things that I don't like really are things like website design, graphic design. Um, um, you know, what else? Things like uh, SEO as well is kind of a bit slow. Things that are, yes, important, but don't really give you that return on investment. They don't really give the business owner that instant return on investment. Um, and really the whole trend of the SMMA, which is kind of what you hear getting thrown on online, is based around selling ads, okay? Selling advertising services. So Facebook ads, Google ads, TikTok ads, YouTube ads, Pinterest ads, Snapchat ads, whatever it is because that has the highest return on investment for clients, right? Um, you know, you basically sell your service <clears throat> and then a couple of days later, you're spending your client's money to make them an even greater return, which is going to cover that initial cost and your fee and then make sense for the business owner. Okay. Um, so that's why I recommend selling ads. Now, um, I mean, that's really, you know, the, the gist of it. Of course, there's things like you can, you can sell email, you can sell things that also have high ROI. Um, but really, I, I, would, I would definitely recommend selling ads. Uh, that's what I do at my agency, ClickSpring. We sell Google and YouTube ads to e-commerce clients, i.e. clients that sell their own physical products. Um, and it works works very well, okay? So yeah, I won't go too much deeper into that. And next, of course, is you know the business side of things, right? So B2B, service-based business. Obviously, a business is really just a vessel, a vehicle that makes money. Uh, that's really it. You can't really call yourself a business if you don't make any money, um, just, just to let you know. <laughs> um, and now, you know, just to quickly touch on what is an agency, what is a freelancer. <clears throat> so, you know, if you start this tomorrow, right, you start selling Facebook ads tomorrow without a team, um, you're a freelancer, right? Because you are, you know, a single individual that's selling a service that makes you a freelancer. Um, you become an agency owner when you hire a team. Okay. Um, just a, a really unimportant distinction. Um, but I thought I would, I would say that just to let you know. Um, and then I suppose one other thing that I'll touch on before I move on to the actual marketing meat of things is this, is this B2B. So obviously you're the first B, you're the first business. Um, but you know, what's the second business? Okay. So who are you going to sell this service to? Okay. And that's the other question. You've got the service and you've got the niche. Okay. Um, I think, uh, <clears throat> personally service should come first because you know, if you get really, really good at Facebook ads or Google ads or YouTube ads, well, you can kind of sell that to anyone really. Um, and so, yeah, the second question then becomes who you're going to sell it to. Now, <clears throat> I would just make a conscious decision to avoid saturated niches. Um, so, for example, e-commerce, the niche that I'm in, is filled with very sophisticated buyers. Okay, so it's filled with people who spend a lot of time online and they kind of know the whole marketing sales thing. So it becomes very hard to sell them. 
Um, you know, that's why a lot of beginners like to go for dentists, chiropractors, med spas, um, you know, lawyers, even places like that, real estate agents, because they're slightly less sophisticated in this whole online marketing thing. So it's easier to, to sell them services. Okay, cool. So let's actually talk about marketing. Now, hopefully by now you've got a good idea of, you know, what you want to do, um, or at least that you know that this is the smartest route to 10K per month. Um, as I obviously mentioned, it's because it's incredibly low risk, there's low capital investment, and the deals that you're selling are high ticket and often recurring as well, which means that you get, um, yeah, you know, deals that recur and recur and recur, okay? Next is the marketing, okay? So now you've got something to sell and someone to sell it to, we need to now put that thing in front of them, okay? And so now we're gonna talk about marketing. So how can you market your, your, your stuff, right? There's two ways, okay? Very simple, inbound, and outbound. And what you know, what does this mean? Well, inbound is clients coming to you, and outbound is you going to clients. So inbound is things like social media, ads, can be things like a newsletter, right? Anything where you're kind of um, producing something clients or prospects see that thing and then they reach out to you or they or they book a call through that, okay? And then outbound is you going to the prospects, all right? So, you know, that's uh, cold emailing people, cold calling people, cold DMing people, right? And um, <clears throat> depending on which niche you're in will basically depend on what, which of these two is, is more effective. Now, it's my opinion, and I've always held this, that inbound is the key to getting incredibly rich. If you look at the SMA gurus that are Certain courses, well, all of their sales come through their YouTube channel 99% of the time, okay? So they're getting rich through inbound, but they're selling you the latest cold email course. It's a little bit hypocritical. Um, it's not to say that outbound doesn't work though. However, the market is sophisticated, okay? When this whole SMMA B2B service-based business thing uh, launched, there were barely any people doing it, right? So it meant that there were barely any emails being sent, there were barely any DMs being sent. Now there's a lot more volume, okay? So it's much harder to get this to work. However, there's no <coughs> indication that inbound is, is getting harder, right? So it's not necessarily harder to, um, you know, build a social media profile than it was a couple of years ago. I mean, maybe you could say it is, but I don't think it really is, um, especially compared to how much outbound has gotten, uh, you know, how difficult outbound has gotten. It's not necessarily harder to run ads. Yes, it's slightly more expensive, but you know, I wouldn't say it's it's massively oversaturated in this in this area. Um, and so really I think you should immediately start doing inbound. If you want to hit 10k per month in 2024, I think a big key to that is is immediately starting a social media channel for your business, okay? Um, or you know, uh, starting a newsletter, whatever it is, okay? Um, and then you know, really I think you should do one of this and one of these, okay? Uh, okay, so one you know, focus on, for example, Twitter or LinkedIn or Instagram, go wherever your prospects are, okay? Whether, if you decide you want to sell to dentists, well, dentists are going to live on LinkedIn, they're not going to live on Twitter. So you go there and you start posting content there, okay? On a, on a you know, daily basis, right? It doesn't have to be much more complicated than that. Basically, you want to just, you know, yeah, post regularly, obviously. Um, and, you know, in time, you'll start attracting clients, okay? Once you get a few thousand followers, you get a bit of authority behind you you will then start to attract clients, okay? And then you should choose one of these things as well, all right? Um, you know, email, DM, cold call, I don't really care. Uh, just choose one of them. And then you need to stick to that thing, okay? It goes back to this grass is greener on the other side because you're gonna, <laughs> it's gonna, it's the same thing, right? You choose one of these these methods and suddenly you see this new, uh, you know, ads method or this new cold email method and you really wanna go and try that. But that is gonna involve a bunch of time and a bunch of money um, that you should actually just pour into the thing that is working, okay? Um, and that's kind of the, the, the main lesson of this whole marketing thing is uh, go deep. Not wide. Right? Um, what does that mean? It means double down on the thing that's working, get extremely good at it, rather than adding more things on. So. If, like me, you find that Twitter uh, is, a, is, is really working well for you, right? You're selling to coaches, you're selling to consultants, you're selling to info products, you're selling to e-commerce brands. All of these um, people are on Twitter. Okay, and you start, um, you start getting clients, right? Um, that is proof of concept and you want to double down on that. So that means posting more. That means investing in, um, you know, 
uh, creative like images to start posting on your Twitter. It means investing in, um, I don't know, a content strategist like I myself have done this this year. Um, it means all of these things, okay? Rather than me going, oh, Twitter's working well, now let me try Facebook, now let me try sh short form content, TikTok. Um, because that's just gonna spread my focus, okay? It's gonna make my beam wider and less effective. All right, so that is the basis of, of marketing, right? So we've gone from mindset, we're now doing marketing. Okay, we understand this. Now, of course, on this channel, I'm gonna go into much, much, much more detail about these things. I think really all I need from you guys uh, is just to let me know which of these areas you want me to dive into um, and, and let you know which kind of lessons have helped me get to 50K a month. This is really just an overview of how you should get to 10K a month. It's then your job to kind of go and research and understand these elements, okay? All right, now we're gonna get to fulfillment. So we're gonna assume that the, the, the marketing, <coughs> marketing has worked and you've, you've, uh, you've just made a client, right? You've sold a client on your, on your service, okay? And so now you have to deliver, okay? So this is the third part, right? So <coughs> fulfillment is, you know, it's really the most important thing in a way um, because, you know, you have to ask yourself the question, what could you do? What would you have to do if uh, you couldn't do this anymore, right? If you, if, you, if you couldn't do this whole inbound, outbound thing, the only way you could get clients is through word of mouth, all right? Once you've signed your first client, that's it, capiche, no more marketing. Um, you, you, you can only get more clients through this one client telling their friends. Obviously, the thing you're gonna pour all your time into is results, okay? Getting clients results. And, you know, the thing that, you know, really, really, really successful entrepreneurs like Sam Ovens preach is that product is number one, right? And when I say product, I mean this this thing here, service or product, you know, whatever you want to call it, your, your thing that you're delivering. That is number one, okay? Um, and anything else is, you know, is I'm sure, you know, obviously everything else here is important, but <clears throat> number one is is the product when it comes to the business side of things, okay? So yeah, you need to make it as good as humanly possible. Whether you're selling ads, whether you're selling uh, SEO or AI automation, whatever it is, you need to make sure it works. And I'll give you one simple rule for this, okay? It's called the 10% rule. And this basically means that if, uh, more than 10% of your clients aren't getting good results, i.e. they're not hitting their goal, because every client should have a goal associated with them, okay? When you sign a client, <clears throat> whatever software you're using, whether it's just your Apple Notes or your, you know, your ClickUp, your Asana, your project management software, your CRM, whatever it is, um, there should be a field where you can actually input the goal that the client wants to achieve because they will have paid you money because they want to hit goal. They want to go from A to B, right? Um, and of course, yeah, we've slightly skipped sales here, I suppose. Um, that is definitely true. Uh, you know, within marketing, I kind of, obviously sales is very different to marketing, but I'm really just talking about growth here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I can dive into sales in really another video, but sales is actually incredibly simple. Um, you know, sales is really just moving, uh, the client from A to B, okay? So they're currently making you know, 10K a month um, and your service, your kind of apples for apples service is gonna directly make them 50K a month and therefore it makes sense to pay you 2K a month, okay? And so if more than 10% of your clients aren't uh, on track to hit B, um, then you should you know, stop all of this and just focus on your, on your product, okay? Um, however, if, uh, you know, if, if, if less than 10% of your clients are, are you know, suffering, um, then you can, that's okay. Because that's just really the Preto principle at that point. Like not every single one of your clients is gonna get results. Don't worry, it's normal. Sometimes um, that's just what happens, okay? Now, obviously we would all love to have, you know, this at zero, we would all love to have our clients, every single one of them uh, reaching their dream goal, but sometimes that is out of our control, okay? Uh, sometimes, you know, the client uh, isn't, doing the work or sometimes the client isn't, um, you know, so something on their end potentially is going wrong, whatever it is, okay? Um, so that's the rule that I would recommend to you, okay? Uh, that's fulfillment, all right? Now, you know, it would be impossible me to, uh, for me to kind of dive into, you know, how to run Facebook ads, how to run Google ads, how to do SEO, all of these services that you could be offering. Um, your job really is just to go and learn them, okay? Start with YouTube and then if you find a good channel, look if they've got a paid course to kind of learn, okay? They probably will. And then finally, we've got operations here, all right? So yeah, what is operations? Well, operations is um, basically your ability to kind of keep the business moving, right? Just keep the business going, run the business. 
okay? Um, and, uh, you know, it doesn't really have to be more complicated than that. Until you reach 10K a month, there's not really going to be many operations, really much to do with, with operations, all right? But it is um, part of this business because if you can't actually uh, handle the amount of clients you're going to get uh, or you're, you currently have, um, then, you know, this flow back to marketing is going to... Um, is gonna kind of be interrupted, right? So what actually is operations? Well, operations is uh, client success, right? So it's making sure the clients are happy, communicating with your clients, um, you know, keeping them keeping them with you. It is, um, you know, uh, your finance, right? Your tax, it's gonna be your, your team eventually when you get to that stage. It's gonna be how your business runs, what software you use. And of course, more most importantly, it's gonna be your culture, okay? Um, yeah, your culture is incredibly important. Um, even when you when it's just you, it's so important to start building your culture from the get-go, okay? Just ask yourself, what do you want your company to, to be like? What do you want it to, to be like when you're when you're working that? Okay? You know, do you want uh, you know, is is one of your values speed or is one of your values, you know, being slow and steady? Is one of your values um, you know, to work 10 hours a day or to just do your best work for five hours a day? All of these things. It's important to understand your culture so that when you hire your employees, you can immediately embed them into your culture. This was a massive mistake I made. When I hit 10K a month, I actually hired my first uh, employee um, or, or contractor, actually. And uh, I didn't have any idea what my culture was. And so they joined and they just didn't really give two hoots about my business. Um, they were kind of doing other things on the side. Uh, they were, you know, violating all of these rules. They were pointing the blame finger all the time. Um, and yeah. Team calls became really awkward. Results weren't very good. And yeah, it was pretty miserable. So yeah, after I fired them, I quickly learned that culture was very important. And um, yeah, when I started building my culture, everything improved. Um, and so yeah, just for reference, our mission at ClickSpring is to become the most sought after paid search agency in the world. Our vision is to help uh, make scaling simple for e-commerce brands. And our values are brilliance, integrity, and um, responsibility, okay? Cool. So that is the smartest way to 10K a month, right? If you can do all of this well, then you know the cycle repeats, okay? You sign more clients, you fulfill those clients, you make sure the business runs smoothly, you, you generate case studies, okay? That's another thing there, starting to generate assets for your business, okay? Um, and a case study is basically just proof of results that you're getting for clients, which then feeds back into your marketing, which then means you fulfill more, which means you uh, you do your operations again and, and you hire maybe that someone this time and then it repeats, okay? It's very, very simple. This is the smartest way to 10K a month. Don't spend loads of money on a product. Don't spend loads of money on stock for Amazon FBA. Don't get into crypto. Don't get into AI automation, uh, in my opinion. I think that's stupid, um, you know, because it's incredibly, incredibly complicated. Just sell a simple service that business owners um, aren't already, you know, doing themselves or, you know, that they don't have the time to do. Uh, that's going to be the lowest risk and the fastest way to hit 10k a month uh, without, you know, going crazy. All right. So that is everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Um, hopefully you don't mind the mad scientist scrolling over the whiteboard. My name's uh, George and yeah, thank you very, very much for watching this video. If you want to see a bit more from me, please go and follow my Twitter uh, to actually watch me do all of this stuff in public and, you know, hopefully get to seven figures as well in the next few months. And uh, other than that, Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment so YouTube shows you more of this kind of long form whiteboard style of content. And yeah, stay tuned for the next video. Bye.